one area that um, actually we've developed over the past few years and um, we're having very high success with is what's called we call third party reproduction. It's basically using either egg donation for women who have no ovarian function or using uh, a carrier, a surrogate, in cases where the, uh, the uterus doesn't function. And in some cases, of course, you can do both. Uh, and this is an option that the, the patients need to be aware of. Uh, of course, it's no one's first choice to have a child that's not genetically related to them. Uh, but if the choices are between using an egg donor or adoption, then it becomes a little bit more palatable. Uh, so in the case of an egg donor, the, uh, the donor, the young woman, will actually get stimulated with a medication and the eggs are retrieved and fertilized with the husband's sperm. And while all this is happening, the recipient will be primed with hormones so her uterus becomes receptive at the right time. Uh, the success of these procedures is, is quite high. It's somewhere about 70% plus. Uh, the opposite, in case the woman has eggs, has functioning ovaries, but the uterus doesn't work or is not there, uh, you can basically do the same thing in reverse, take her eggs, fertilize them, and place them into a surrogate. That also has a very high chance of success. Uh, as far as the legal aspect of all this, is, is we don't really have enough time to cover, but uh, different states have different laws. And in almost all cases, I'd say probably in all cases, uh, we can find a state in which the surrogate can come from, which would actually where it would be legal and be easy to do. So it takes a little bit of, of playing around with, with the particular couple, whether they're married or they're single or they're gay and so forth, uh, to find the right place to do it. Uh, but that's something that's, that's very doable. Uh, as far as, you know, the last resort for those couples where none of the other options work uh, is adoption. And, you know, as you well know, adoption is very difficult. It's not just very expensive, but it's very difficult to do in the U.S. Uh, very few children, um, newborns, are available for adoption. Uh, even the foreign adoption uh, are starting to become more difficult. In Eastern Europe, China, South America. Uh, it's becoming more and more difficult. In fact, in the U.S., having a cancer history is not a good thing if you're trying to apply for adoption because then they are going to be a few years out and so forth. And on top of all this, the process is, is quite expensive. So we always look at that as almost the last resort. Uh, but clearly for many couples, it works very well. This is just to show that, you know, China used to be, you know, the easiest place to adopt from, and now they've changed, and basically they have age limitations and so forth. So it's, it's become really, really difficult to adopt, even abroad. Uh, the, the issue with children and fertility preservation is, is somewhat painful because we don't really have a whole lot to offer at this point. Uh, both boys and girls, where their gonads actually aren't active yet, are not matured yet, uh, there's very limited treatment that can be done. I mean, basically, removing the ovary, removing the testicles, and freezing is, is you know, theoretically is possible, but there's no data, no uh, uh, cases where it, it was successful. So basically, whatever is out there now for children is more experimental, you know, under IRD approval and so forth, but there's unfortunately not much that we can offer for children. Uh, we listed here the, the, uh, the resources. Uh, Fertile Hope is, uh, is actually a very good organization. There's some brochures out there. Uh, they do a lot of education uh, and, uh, and support for patients. And uh, of course, Lance Armstrong's foundation is, is also uh, very active. Uh, the American Society for uh, Clinical Oncologists and the American Society of Reproductive Medicine have quite a bit of educational material uh, as well. So uh, in closing, I just wanted basically just to summarize, um, there are options. And you know, the success of the treatments, of our treatments, 
are, are significantly higher than they were 20 years ago or even 10 years ago. But the problem is that these options actually have to be discussed in time. And in some cases, there is not enough time, but whenever there is time, uh, you know, a serious discussion actually should take place. And, and when the treatment plan uh, is put into place, uh, this should be a, a, an integral part of the, of the discussion. Uh, you know, and to, to emphasize the fact that you know, there's more survivors and, and quality of life is becoming a real issue, I mean, with that in mind, um, uh, I think the message should be that we should work as a team. So if there is a patient and there is a question, um, we're always here, and I'm more than happy, and we always, of course, with these people, we're very flexible as far as getting them in and getting, talking to them and getting their procedures done as, as quickly as possible. Uh, thank you for your attention, and also wanted to, uh, to thank Sharon Cloud for uh, sponsoring.